So here we go then, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Kings of Anglia Tractor Gals Talk podcast, the show where we cover all things issues town women. I'm joined, as ever, by my co-host and town woman skipper, Blue Wilson, and we're joined by a special guest who made her first start, scored her first goal, and has been brilliant throughout pre-season. That is Leah Mitchell. Um, Blue, great to have you on. Um, since we've been on, you've had surgery, minor surgery, but surgery to that. Um, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm really good. Um, so we're recording this oh, a week since I've had surgery. So this time last week, I would have been sitting in, in the hospital um, having had it done. But yeah, no, it's it was quite a minor procedure. Um, and compared to the, the two I've had before, the pain has been quite easy to deal with. Um, and I'm walking about and stuff like that. So all went well, I think the surgeon said. Um, I'm hoping. Um but yeah, no, I'm feeling good and glad it's out of the way. Um, and I know the club sort of put out a message about it anyway, so you'll be aware. But um, all is good and yeah, ready to get back going and back in the gym. Um, I think my first session back will be this week. Um, so yeah, that's looking forward to that. But how are you, Russ? And obviously you, Leah, both had long trips. I didn't make it to Cardiff. Um, have you both recovered? Uh just about. Um, I yeah. decided to play five aside on Monday, and that was probably yeah. the, the wrong decision. Of course, Leah played the full ninety minutes um, <laughs> on on the Sunday, so I, I was just there taking pictures and just travelling back. But yeah, Leah, it's great to have you on. Um, thanks for joining us. How are you? And how yeah, how are you feeling since that the weekend that was? Yeah, no, I've just recovered. Just recovered. Uh, training yesterday, I think everyone was feeling it a little. Um, but yeah, no, we've all rested, all recovered. You know onto this week's training and this week's match. Yeah, it's good to hear. And um, I blew off, completely forgot. And I wouldn't say I've not forgot because I do put on our notes. Of course, John Fowler Solicitors is our sponsors. So big shout out to them. Big shout out to Mark Kennedy and the team there for their continued support. We weren't, I didn't forget. I just didn't say it in the intro bit, uh, but we've said it now. So it's all good. Um, but yeah, Blue, um, shall we quickly actually talk about the elephant in the room? Of course, the Lionesses um, didn't win at the World Cup. Um of course, got to the final. Unbelievable history. But Spain, overall, probably was a better team. Um, but yeah, you're watching the semi-final in your um, hospital bed. Uh, of course, the final, me, Leah and the whole team watched it in our hotel. But um, yeah, quick thoughts on that. Yeah, so as you mentioned, watched the semi-final in my hospital bed. Um, so I, luckily, I was first one into surgery. So it meant that I was out in time. And the first question as I wake up from the anaesthetic, I'm like, what time is it and have I missed the game anyway luckily I hadn't and my parents arrived so we we actually sat in the hospital because it uh hospital room because my room had a little tv and we watched the game there um but that was a great game and then obviously the final on Sunday um high pressure game and I think you could tell that we looked quite nervous and obviously didn't perform um which was disappointing but Spain Spain rose to the occasion and they fully deserved to win on that day um, so yeah, disappointing, but again, something to be proud of. Um, again, like you said, making history, but it's just a shame we couldn't just get over the line. Um, but I'm, I'm sure there'll be many tournaments to come with this group of players where hopefully they can they can win the World Cup. Yeah, Leo, we watched it, of course, in our hotel and, um, you know, they inspired another generation, that team. Um, and of course, our team is inspiring generations in, the, in our area, but... Um, yeah, it was um, sad that they lost, but yeah, another history-making moment. Yeah, um, I think getting to the final anyway was of such a big achievement. Um, and obviously the Euros last year, I think, you know, it's just showing how much this, um, you know, the women's football is growing and, you know, it's always going up. Um, and yeah, we didn't win it, but I think, again, it's inspired so many so many young girls and so many, you know, people within the sport. Um, yeah, no, nah, it was tough to watch, but next next time, I reckon. Yeah, next one. Next one. Always the next one. He, we go again. We go again, as EK would say. <laughs> um, and what I loved about when the players were watching it, just some, some of the players who were just commentators, commentators throughout, um, some great, you know, just yeah, definitely when Mary Earps saved her penalty. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the tongue out and everything going, yeah, you know, that was just yeah, great. That, that got us riled up a little, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. And um, of course, that prepared us 
for our big game to open the season. Um, we'll get onto that shortly, of course. Uh, once again, Blue, I didn't mention it in the intro. We won opening game. Unbelievable scene. Super mega wearing, getting the winner. Um, we'll get onto that shortly. But we want to sort of have a little introduction to, to Leah um, because some people may... Oh, hey, it's not harsh, but maybe you're, you're unknown, an unknown player coming through this season. You made a few appearances last season off the bench, Leah, but uh, your first start against Cardiff, your first goal, we'll get onto that shortly. But um, introduction to yourself, how, how did you get into football originally? Um, was it family members, anything like that? Um, well, I've always had my dad's side of the family, very sporty. Um, dad, kind of done every sport, really. Um, played a little bit of football, but not not that much but I, it was actually because i live in a village um and quite a lot of people in my year you know the boys played football and i live quite close to them um and so i was just like oh i want to join in um and then one of the parents you know made a village squad invited me along um and i started playing football from there i uh, haven't looked back um and yeah, uh, gone. So I was at the village team for most of, you know, up until I think I was maybe 13, 14. Um, and then got scouted by Simon, who was at Essex, um, to then come and join Essex. And I started when I was upper under 14s. Um, and then I was there for three years, which is where I then saw, you know, Joe, um, who was the assistant coach. Um, and he was just, he said something about Ipswich um, the season before I left. Um, so it was always in mind um, coming into the end of the under 16 season. Um, and then, you know, got in touch with him again and, you know, came to Ipswich. And, been all right just yeah it's been all right been been all right. right yeah and yes oh, that's been the link into i think with joe a lot of the players and the squads have been linked with him when you know when you were first breaking through you know with essex rtc or anything like that of course so were you at st joe's as well was you part yeah. of that link as well um so yeah once again i've had a connection to you blue you, you went to st joe's as well when you came back and joined us uh once again blue i'm putting you on the spot your first um thoughts on leah when you first met her and her in training and her playing See, I was thinking about this this morning because I knew you were going to ask the question. So I was preparing and, and trying to remember the first time I saw Leah play. And I think it may have been you and Evie, maybe together. And the, fir the first initial thought was, what do these, they feed these kids to make them so <laughs> tall? And where was it when I was that age? <laughs> Because you're both so tall, like big centre backs. I was like, oh, this is what we need. Um, but yeah, no, just very, both you and Evie, both very calm on the ball. And I think it's coming across in this podcast, actually, just so relaxed, chilled. And that's exactly what we want. You know, we play, we want to play good, fluid football. And that starts with the centre backs and goalkeeper. So I think it was the composure and ability to just handle pressure coming into a first team environment where you're you're likely to feel a bit more of that uh yeah i think that's the that was the takeaway where i was like wow they're so unflustered when in possession of the ball that was my um that was my first impression and then ever since as ross mentioned um especially this pre-season when i've seen you a lot more and now Obviously, now we've started the league season. Hopefully, you can continue that. And it's looking good. It's looking good, Ross. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, during pre-season, um, I sort of made a few notes of different players who stood out. And uh, yeah, Leah was one of the standouts for me. And Eve, Evie as well, Evie Williams, never plays, broke through. Um, this is your first pre-season, Leah. Um, how's that been with the first team? Last year, we were playing for the under-21s. Um, as I said before, you made a few sub appearances at the end of last season. But um, yeah, how has pre-season been for you as a whole? I think, obviously, I was in and around first team last season. Um, and I think that kind of helped the jump, really. Um, and having Evie, as you mentioned there as well, coming through the academy and then coming up with me as well. Um, it's helped me a lot settle um, quite quickly. 
um, and the girls are lovely. Make it so easy um, to like, because um, I do, as much as you say it doesn't come across, I do feel the pressure. Um, but you know, having these girls around me on and off the pitch, um, it's it's like it's hugely helped. Um, and yeah, the preseason being great, I think gelling with the team uh, was massive. And I think everyone's kind of we're in it together. Really, there's not really any. Um, yeah, so it's been great getting. I think it's got got to know the girls a lot more and how they play and on and off the pitch. Um, yeah, no, it's been been a good preseason. That's good. And um, your first overnight stay as well. I'm um, I'm sure you may have done it with the you know you've done it um, maybe other teams, but your first overnight with this team. Um, how was that? You know, Cardiff to, to start off with. Um, not not a bad little trip, but uh, not a nice part of the world actually. As Newport, we were staying in the hotel. The hotel weren't too shabby, but yeah. How was that, your first overnight stay? Yeah, long journey. Um, but I spent, because I, Ruby, I think it's her, it was her, obviously her first away trip as well. Um, so there's quite a lot of us we, that hadn't had an away trip. Um, I had one last season, end of the season, against Bridgewater. Um, but I think this one was, I think, kind of like a fresh start. Um, a lot of new faces and... Um, yeah, I think I shared with Nia, um, who I've been very close to as well. Um, so that helped. And then, obviously, when we when we got there, um, had dinner, and then after we had time to relax and just enjoy the evening, we went out into the town, had a little walk. Some of us, um, which was nice. The air was all right. Um, and then came back and played some games. And yeah. It was nice and relaxed, which, yeah, very good. It's probably a good thing, actually, that this season that there has been quite a lot of movement in the squad. So for, for younger players like yourself who are coming up, because there's quite a lot of people feeling not, I don't want to say it's sort of, it's still a safe environment, but it's a little bit more transitional. If everyone's sort of feeling in the same boat that we haven't got like a locked in squad, actually then you all sort of come together because you're all feeling the same you don't know yeah. who's going who's coming in whatever um so although it's nice to have a, a squad which you take from the previous season to the next and build and build actually to have a little bit of a reset probably helps yeah. other players um and obviously gives opportunity as well which you have definitely taken for sure yeah yeah it's massive i think yeah, i was um because obviously i've been close to Vivi in the under 21s um, and just having that someone else, even if just one person, having that someone else has helped hugely. Um, yeah, so yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's always good. And yeah, we have made some new signings since we last recorded Blue. Once again, I didn't mention that. Uh, Ruby Doe from Arsenal and uh, Laura Hartley, the, the goalie, uh, former Lewis and Brighton goalkeeper. Some more depth to the squad. Of course, fans are going, come on, where's this signings at? But um, two in one week. Um, yeah, Ruby, of course, made a debut um, against Cardiff. Laura was on the bench. Um, and just another um, a player in the squad. I think Nina is going to be going out on loan. So, um, interesting to see where she heads, um, goes out. We'll, of course, let you know. And, of course, there's more signings to come. So, calm down, town fans. There'll be more fat signings to come, I'm sure. Um, but let's jump right into, then, the game, Cardiff game. Um, of course, not the start we wanted. Blue, uh, what were your feelings like when you saw the goal um, on Twitter going, oh, 1-0? And uh, we'll get Leah's point of view on that in a sec. But, um, yeah, not the start we wanted to start the campaign. Um, my first reaction was I I didn't actually refresh um, that soon, so I refreshed after about ten minutes, and obviously I saw the the one minute uh, timestamp, um, like town concede or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, but I hope uh, I was hoping that that would have woken us up. Um, it sounded like from Twitter, it sounded like it was a, a, a dubious one. Um, I'm not actually sure what quite happened. Um, but Leah, what was it? Because on Twitter, I think Kieran had said um, the ref has allowed the free kick to be taken quickly um, and sort of it, implying the Ips which weren't organised and yeah. the, the goals happened. Um, but it sounded like it wasn't a real goal, if that makes sense. It was a yeah, on the fence one. Yeah. Um, so keeper uh, kicked it long. Um, they were very on us, uh, which we were a bit. You know, we weren't ready for 
Um, and then I think I tried to clear it, kind of, there was some pressure in me. Um, somehow ended up on the floor, with, as well as the other player, so then he called it as a free kick. Um, and they just spotted the ball, not where the, where the girls had fallen over, but, you know, good thinking, spotted the free, spotted the ball, played it, and then they'd scored, obviously. Um, I think it was a bit of a wake-up call for us. Um, and I think we responded very well to that. Um, you know, we calmed down, um, we got possession of the ball, and... Yeah, we just looked more ourselves, um, knowing that we could do a lot more and a lot better than, you know, the start. Yeah, of course, Blue. We, we responded very well. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's get right into it, Leo. We, we've, we've been teeing it up. Um, your first start for the club, of course, first of all. But um, rising heist and um, scoring the goal. OK, massive deflection, but got to claim it. Um, yeah, thoughts on that? A good delivery. Um, was it Bonnie? Bonnie would take it. Yeah, Bonnie would of course take the um, corner kick. Um, and yeah, you jump highest. There's a few players going for it, but you're the one getting connection. Hits the defender, goes in, claim it. Yeah, doesn't matter how it goes in. How it goes in, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, I think um, we'd been practicing corners quite a lot, um, and we 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 had actually looked back on it yesterday, and it. Um, you know, we kind of, areas-wise, we were all in this areas we needed to. And lucky enough, I was in the area where the ball, and I just got a little header to it. Obviously, came off the defender, but the goal's a goal, um, and we'll take it. Yeah, um, Kieran got, had a bit of a boo-boo, although I don't think he probably had the best angle, but he did give it to Megan, first of all. And, of course, we got on to Meg later, um, but then I think I, I had to correct him because I got a picture and went, I think that's Leah there, because Meg's behind, behind you. Um, but yeah, you're the one actually jumping up and doing the header, and of course it, it did hit the defender and all that. Um, but of course we corrected him, and then he tweeted your goal, your gif, and everything. Um, and yeah, blue. Um, it's good to see us scoring. Well, two of our goals were from set pieces, so um, that's a good start straight as well. As well. Yeah, it's an area last season where I thought we could have done a lot better, um, and especially this season we've got a, a bit more height. Um, you've got players like Meg, Leah, Evie, um, obviously Tash. I think is there any other tall players? Uh, not sure. Anyway, we'll go with those. But in terms of how many we get and how many we um, converted, wasn't really that great. Um, but to start the season off with two set pieces scored, hopefully we can continue that and also add some some goals from open play, um, some nice, fluid, beautiful football too. Bit of a bit of a combo. I can cope with that. Yeah. Definitely. And um, I think from there, we, we sort of took control of the game. You know, Peskett and uh, Ruby Doe making their debut were real threats for me in that in that first half. And then the second half comes in. Um, big chances for Tash, big, a big chance for Summer as well. Um, of course, there was sadly a, a big stoppage of, for the Cardiff City player. She um, did something to her shoulder. So thoughts with her. Hopefully she's all OK. We've not had an update just yet. Um, but that was a, a big stoppage, Leah. What was that like as a player when you have a player down for that long, what do you have to do to sort of keep yourself, you know, still got that, you know, you, you don't want to, what's the word? I don't know, I don't know the word, Blue. What's the word? Um, I'm trying to think, what, what, well, in my head, when I'm playing as a big stoppage, I'm like, you don't want to lose concentration. Yeah, that's the you, word. You also don't want to, if it's your mate, you don't want to become too emotional Mm -hmm. and lose that focus because if you then start worrying about the play who's just gone down um i think it's a lot easier once you're in it you're very focused and it's almost like it's harsh but you you have to try and forget about it and move on um but depending on momentum i think it can really interrupt it um so yeah but i obviously wasn't there to see the shoulder injury but it's it is difficult i don't know whether you find that leah i really find that if there's stoppages and lots of break up in play that I quite like the rhythm and momentum of football. How do you find it? Yeah, obviously it's the momentum. You know, it affected the momentum of the game. But um, it kind of allowed us to regroup. Um, you know, patterns we were trying to create, which did, may not have worked, you know, we are able to try and find solutions, um, other solutions to it. Trying to get clarity of what 
um, our roles are um, for this game in particular um, and how this will affect it or, you know, just trying to think of solutions um, to some things that weren't quite working. Um, I think it allowed us to fully kind of understand what we needed to do to really get the most out of this game and try and take more control of it. Um, which I personally, I got a lot of, you know, I, I got more understanding of what I needed to do um, and what others around me needed to do so that I was able to try and, you know, help them during the match. Um, but yeah, it's tough, obviously, seeing a player get injured. It's quite serious, but, you know, you know I hope she's all right. And, and yeah. That was the word I was trying to think of, momentum. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> just, I just, my mind went to blank and um, I just couldn't think of the word momentum. But um, that was the word I was thinking of, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But thankfully, Blue and Leah helped me out there. Um, so, yeah, I had that stoppage, of course, so the player had to be stretched off. Um, but, Leah, what, what, what's your thoughts on that that sort of second half before we got on to the, the added time? Because, yeah, we had some big chances. You know, Tash had a chance, as Summer had a chance as well. Of course, Summer's still waiting for that first competitive goal she scored in pre season. But, yeah. Your overall thoughts on that second half? I think we built up, we built, you know, very well. Get up the pitch. I think it was just that final, final touch, final ball, which kind of let us down. You know, obviously we did have chances, um, just weren't clinical. But you know, it's it's positive that um, we created these chances. We've played this football that we want to play, um, and it's just the final, you know, final bit now that we need to execute. But um, yeah, I think second half, we kind of got into it. Um, here and there, they'd get a counter, but, um, you know, we weren't really, well, I wasn't really nervous that, you know, that they'd get a goal or we'd lose it or something. I think we'd all, I, I'd always thought that, you know, we have control, we can win this game, um, we should win this game. Um, and obviously, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. I think Poppy had to make me one save. Of course, Poppy Sofa making her debut as well. Um, I think, yeah, she had to make a save maybe in the 75th minute or something. But then the stoppage time came and, uh, wow, what, what, a, what a stoppage time that was because before we get on to, once again, Meg's goal, and we are we are building this goal up now because, yeah, it was unbelievable scenes. But, um, yeah, we got a penalty, which was definitely a penalty. Tash got basically, yeah, uh, it, no, I was about to say insulted, but she wasn't insulted. She was just brought down. <laughs> it's a bit, a bit over top for me. Um, but yeah, of course, Plag got red carded. Bonnie steps up. And of course, we can rely on Bonnie because she scored a lot of penalties last season, but she misses. But it was great save by the keeper. So actually, you don't actually say miss penalty. You just say save by the keeper. And of course, that went out for a corner. And um, then from that corner, we score. I think that's from that corner. Was it from that corner, Leah? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but quick blue... Bonnie, I'm sure she took some free kicks. She actually really scored a few free kicks in this game. We had a few, actually a lot of, there was a lot of fouls in this game as well, actually. A few yellow cards. Um, but yeah, not not a great moment for Bonnie, but good save from the keeper though. Yeah, I think it's just a, a little chink in the armour. I'm sure yeah. she'll be she'll be back to it. Um, I'm sure she won't let it affect her, but these things happen. And I can imagine it was quite a, a high pressure penalty and, uh, especially at the start of the season once she gets into flow. Um, but I still think we can always rely on Bonnie. Um, I'd back her um, massively. And I know another good penalty taker within the squad is Lucy O'Brien, who currently is out. Um, but, you know, it's it's one of those you can't always score penalties. Sometimes it is just luck. Um, but the most important thing is that actually it led to Megan Waring's first goal. So... You know, every cloud has a silver lining. And to be fair, Bonnie had to wait a little while to take the pen. I think that was a little while. I think that was when Holly, unfortunately, at a similar time, or was, I think, the time where she had to come off. So there's a time to sort of wait for Bonnie to take it. And um, we got some good news on Holly, though. It's not as serious as first feared, because we'll get onto that in a bit in terms of um, we, we left Carter very late because um, we had to, of course, wait for the ambulance for Holly. But um, we'll get onto that shortly. But good news, she's fine. And uh, hopefully she's back in training this week. Um, but yeah, super Megan Waring with her first goal. We've been, we've been talking about it all last season, weren't we, Blue? We had her on the pod last year and um, just scenes, just absolute scenes. Back post, they couldn't clear it. Megan Waring's there, Leah. Unbelievable scenes. You were there celebrating with the girls as well. Yeah, thoughts on that? 
brought away to score your first goal for the club. Um, yeah, I think you could see the celebration, how much it meant to her, how much it meant to all of us. Um, I actually joked because she was just running, just running everywhere, trying to catch up with her. At one point, she'd gone to the camera. You know, I'd followed, and one minute she weren't there. Um, but yeah, absolute scenes. I think having the supporters there as well. You know, if there was a few of them, there was. You know, it still meant a lot. Um, I think you could tell from everyone, from the footage, that it meant so much to us. Um, and it couldn't have been anyone else but Meg um, to get that goal. Um, yeah, and yeah, very, very. Um, you know, I think. I think she wouldn't say, but I think. Needed for Megan, I think great to have it start the season as well. Confidence, you know, you could tell, you know, she's a great player. She deserved the goal. Played very, very well in that game as well. Um, yeah, she deserved it. Yeah, she did. And uh, she gets props blue, by the way, for because um, she was wheeling away, running like anybody, you know, at the time you were just in your head. But then I think she mentioned after the game, went, oh no, Ross! <laughs> and she celebrated <laughs> and then she ran away and she wheeled away with her teammates. And a big shout out to your mum, Leah. <laughs> that, there's one picture of Meg wheeling away and your mum's there just, just enjoying the moment. Um, of course, I know Meg's parents would have loved that as well. A big shout out to them because um, they, of course, travel the country to support Meg. And uh, that's one thing. Just shout out to all the parents who do that because they, they travel the country. Even Joe's parents, they, they go to all the games as well. But, um, yeah, especially your mum, Leah, though, in, in the background of one of the pictures celebrating. Um, so that's good to see. Um, but, yeah, Blue, she finally did it. She scored the goal, back post, and what a goal to score. Your first, as Leah said, first goal, a winner to get all three points to start the season. I know. I think it's no matter who you're playing, if you're scoring at that stage in the game and it's your first goal, oh, it's just, yeah, I, I, it's, it's hard to describe that feeling, I think, in that, in that moment. And the clip of uh, Megan's celebration is oh, so good. I've watched that a few times, actually. Um, and I did laugh, but uh, I, I texted Megan. And I was like, I think you're already up there, potential contender of uh, celebration of the season. <laughs> it's going to take some beating. <laughs> she just goes crazy. There's a whole kiss in the badge, running over to the fans. She, she just loses her head. It's so funny. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I was concerned as we were getting into additional minutes, but yeah, we, we secured it. And we were saying before the podcast, podcast started, that maybe if that was last season that we we only draw that game, but I feel like there's a different air about this team. And from what Leah said uh, a little bit ago, that we weren't concerned we were going to concede. It was just a matter of time before we converted. Um, and maybe we need to get better at getting ourselves out of that situation where we were desperately needing goals in the final few kicks of the game. But um, But it's good to see that we can handle the pressure and then still deliver in those moments. But really pleased for Meg. Hopefully this now opens the floodgates to to many more headed goals. Maybe an overhead kick if we're lucky. But um, yeah, it's really good to see. I was really pleased. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, we saw the game out because um, there was still, yeah, there was still a good amount of time left I to play. I think it was like 10, 10 more. So, crazy. crazy, isn't it? It's madness. Um, what, what was the sort of message really from the bench and just the, the team as a whole, you know, you know, could you have scored that late when you got, uh, you know, uh, just adrenaline in everybody's body? Um, you don't want to go, you don't want to make a mistake, you don't want to con concede. Yeah, what was sort of said? Um, I think it was just, we've got the lead now. Hang on to it. You know, we've, we're have we more than capable of, you know, leading, you know, kind of um, handling the, the pressure of not conceding in the last 10. Because 10 minutes does feel like a long time. Um trying to hold that hold out that lead but um the, I didn't again I didn't think that we because our response to it um we we held the ball very well um after you know we kept the ball we played our good football um it, it didn't look like we felt the pressure at all um and yeah I think we handled it very well yeah I think so too and um, yeah shout out to um, everyone for, for keeping that, that lead and um, getting the three points to start the season. Uh, of course, Maisie Barker also made a debut as well. 
Um, and yeah, a lot of appearances for everyone part of the game. Um, but yeah, good news, as we mentioned, Holly, uh, with our injury. Um, but yeah, Leah, we were still in Cardiff for many hours after that. Um, everyone's still buzzing from, from the win. Um, but yeah, we didn't leave Cardiff, I think it was like eight o'clock because yeah, Holly was waiting for the ambulance for her. The ambulance took for ages. I think at one stage, Holly wanted to get back on the coach. Yeah. Like, no, Holly. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, she was like, oh, no, I'm fine now. I'm fine. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. No, Holly, you're staying here. <laughs> We're gonna, we need medical people to look at you. Um, of course, Peskett and Sophie, the, um, Sophie Peskett and, of course, Sophie Wright, the, the physio, they stay behind and uh, they looked after Holly. And, um, of course, good news. Holly had uh, all the checks and they came home uh, Monday morning. Um, but yeah, a long journey back, Leah. But of course, we're buzzing because we've won three points. Um, I think we all got in very late, obviously. Um, but yeah, a first sort of game to sort of go, yeah, we're here and ready to go. Yeah, I think it's a good game to start the season with. Um, physically tough, mentally a bit tough. Um, but I think it showed that we can come together um, and can we can really push ourselves as a team to get that three points we're more than capable um, of doing it um, and I feel like uh, facing the problems that we did face we faced quite a few um, in that match and then to you know deal with it so well I think it's a massive positive um, for the whole team and I feel like come, go, coming into the season knowing that we can do that I think in the back of our minds, it'd be very, you know, if we do deal with that in the future or similar, you know, knowing that we've done it, I think it'll be very, very good. Definitely. And uh, yeah, Blue, to sort of wrap wrap up the Cardiff um, first game of the season, how, how do you look back at that? Um, yeah, I'm sure when you saw that, you know, full time whistle blow, you went, thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. And breathe. And breathe, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's always great to start the season with a win. Uh, like Leah said, just echoing that really. You can then look back on that experience and be like, well, as a group, we've done it before. Um, and obviously different to last season where we started that quite poor, that this season that we started with the three points, it's good to get that first one out of the way. Um, and obviously now on to uh, the cup against Bidariki. Um And I think we've got Plymouth at home after that. Um, so a bit of a, a break for the cup and then, yeah back to league action but a good start um i do want to ask one question though food review after the game what was the food offering how was it probably probably not what you want to eat after you've played 90 minutes of football um because yeah. it was chips a bit of bread um Ooh. i got offered chicken nuggets so i'll take that um i don't know what you had leah what, what is it the, chicken, I just had the sausages didn't know the chicken nuggets were available yeah. Oh, the bloke yeah. just I, I let everyone, as always, I'm I'm polite. I let all the players, all the staff eat, and um, I, I was having a little look, and one of the guys who was you know who ran the place said, "Oh, do you want anything, mate?" Well, yeah, yeah, I don't mind. I'll have some chips if you want. And he went, "Oh, you can have some chicken nuggets if you want, or you can have anything. You can pick as pizza there as well." And I was like, "Okay." So I, I had the chicken nuggets, had the chips. They weren't great, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't great. And it's not sounding great. No, I like free food. You can't, you know. Um, but for, for you know, for players like Leah and everyone, probably not the food you really want to eat after you're playing ninety minutes. Um, so out of ten, it's probably going to get. I maybe get a two. Give it a two. Just be nice. <laughs> yeah, a um, two to be nice. <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't. The chips weren't great, were they, Leah? They weren't no, great. No, no, no. Joe, so loves go on. Sorry. Joe loved it. He made a chip butty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolute health right there. <laughs> yeah, good up. Yeah, that's the thing as well. There was bread. Like, like did you have bread? Did, can, no, can I you... didn't have the bread. No. I just because they just left it there. It was, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was yeah. It was a lovely to be fair, it was a lovely little setup there. Shout out to, to Cardiff. That was a nice little setup there, but um probably not the food you want to eat after playing. Mm -hmm. Um as it like for me it's fine because yeah, I'm just snapping away, but you you're like what's your what's your ideal meal really after a game? You want to have a bit of pasta or something or yeah, chicken. Like yeah, a bit of chicken. Yeah, probably like chicken pasta. That's what I usually. Yeah, that's solid in it. That's solid. Um, but yeah, not not chips and sausage, um, or chicken nuggets. But um, so yeah, blue start off the season. Yeah, sadly two out of ten, I think. Um, and that's being it's a bit nice to be honest. <laughs> so. Um, and actually, let's talk quickly about. I've got a little story for the pod. Um, 
and this does involve me uh, and me being stupid, stupid me as always. Um, so a big shout out to Puey and Regan um, because we went to the men's game on the, the Saturday and uh, we got the train, um, of course, from London to, to, to Newport, which is where we were staying. And uh, we arrived, I think it was about 9.30. Absolutely, it, it pissed it down, by the way, when we arrived. When we got to the train, I think it was like a five, ten minute walk from the train station to the hotel. And it just decided to start raining when we got off the train. And we just, we were absolutely drenched when we got to the hotel. Um, so we went to our rooms. Um, my stuff was in Kieran's room. I think Regan's and Pewie's was in Kieran's room. And um, Regan just quickly asked me, oh, have you got the battery charger uh, for my, for this camera? I went, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, oh no, and, and I had two bars, so it was gonna, yeah, it was definitely gonna run out during the game. Um, so we had to the next morning had to basically go to any camera shop in Newport. There's only really one open. They weren't going to sell it to us because they don't set sell it separately. So we had to then go to Cardiff and shout out to the fan David, who um, gave us a lift to the city centre in Cardiff, and thankfully. Because we did call them up originally and said, "Do you have it?" And we they did have it, and we were able to. Um, that was an hour before kickoff, by the way. So, <laughs> so not ideal preparation uh, for us. But uh, we thankfully got the charger. Regan was able to charge it, and of course, Regan was able to capture Megan's celebration because that was the fear: is we could risk it without the two bars. But I'm sure I think it would have died by the time we got to that ninety. Oh, imagine. And if you hadn't have done it, you would have missed that. Oh, missed that mm-hmm. moment. So, yes, I think it was a good idea, even though we had to go into the city centre of Cardiff, which is is nice. Um, but yeah, that is the story of the road for, for uh, this city. I'm sure there can be many more stories to come, but I thought I'd just mention that. But yeah, shout out to Regan for capturing that um, great scenes for Meg's goal. Um, but there we go then. Uh, Blue, shall we do a little roundup? Oh, Leah, have you got any other business from the Cardiff trip? Anything else you want to mention? Um, number six, by the way, back of the uh, shirt. Yeah, I'll take yeah. it. Big yeah. number, big number. Um, um, not really. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, it, it was a lovely day, of course, a lovely sunny day in Cardiff. Although the there was that fear when you saw the black clouds, you thought, oh, this could be. Because last time, I think we, yeah, we were warming up, um, and it was very, very sunny. And obviously on the Astro, it kind of you feel the heat a little bit. And we went into the change room. We were like sweating from the warm up, and um, we were kind of we saw that back, and we were kind of like, oh, please, just not as much sun, please. But um, you know, obviously, it was fine in the end. Yeah, it was. But yes, yeah, and there was um also found out blue. There was a speaker playing like bird noises. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I don't. I think maybe it is just to. Yeah, scare away, scare away birds so they don't maybe fly over and maybe yeah, do their business or whatever. But I just remember hearing that. They were really loud. Did you hear that, Leah, during the game? Yeah, I did. Yeah, a couple of times oh. during the match, I was like... I thought, you meant, I thought you meant they were playing it instead of music before the game. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, like, no, this was throughout the game as well. Like, they just random... I, once, I think they must have it on like a timer where they just have to play it. But they were really loud and more like... Yeah. What is yeah. it? You're looking up where you're like looking for the birds and you couldn't see them. I was like, what, what is going on? Was that for me? That was really distracting me. I don't know yeah. if I do get it or not. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple of times me and Meg were like looking around, we're like, <laughs> what's that noise? Yeah, yeah, it was good. And it was one stage as well. Yeah. Uh, there was one stage, I think it was uh, during the warm-ups, the, um, their PA or their music, that was so loud. They just, I don't know, it just like burst out. I was like, whoa. It was like just burst everyone's eardrums. Um, but, but yeah, that was that was interesting. But um, yeah, best of luck to Cardiff for the rest of the season. Anyway, of course they will travel down to to our place. But um, shall we have a little look at the the season uh, opening games in our league? Uh, maybe go straight to Billericay because they're our next opponents in the cup. They won six 0 at Plymouth, so not a good start to Plymouth, but uh, a good start for Essex side and a good start for a familiar face in Maddie Biggs. Four goals on her debut. Uh, Leah, you had a good start, um, but Maddie Biggs, four goals uh, on her debut. That is uh, one hell of a start. Of course, Liv Smith making her debut as well. But yeah, Blue, fair play to Bigsy. Four goals. Yeah, I know. I think she may have got an assist as well. I think maybe. So yeah, what a debut. Um, but yeah, I, I am I'm pleased to see her doing well against other teams. 
I just mm. hope she has a really bad game against us. <laughs> Obviously, we love you, Big C. We love you. We will always love you. But, um, you know, yeah, there has to be some sort of rivalry still. Yes, of course, of course. But, yeah, what a, what a start that is. Um, of course, uh, also, another goal scorer on her debut, uh, Zoe Barrett, who um, has joined Oxford from MK. They drew 2-2. I think um, she scored the late equaliser to, to get the point for Oxford. And uh, they've also lost Blue, their manager, who's gone on to Reading and they're in search of a new manager. Of course, they've been our uh, rivals the last two years, but they've lost a manager. But, yeah, Barrett scoring on her debut. Yeah, against their ex-team. So that's a bit of drama. Um, interesting result, actually, because you'd expect Oxford to win that off last season's form. Um, so maybe MK Dons improved. I know Oxford have gone through a bit of a tricky time. Obviously, now their manager leaving as well. So it'll be interesting to sort of track how they do this season. Um, but yeah, Barrett comes back and scores. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, now we're, of course, now a former player that will come up against us um, when we play them. Uh, Portsmouth won their opening game five 0 against Cheltenham. Um, they had a, basically Portsmouth and Chel- uh, Cheltenham had a player sent off um, in the same minute. I don't know. I don't know the full story there, but in the 68th minute, both um, yeah, one of the Portsmouth player and Cheltenham player got sent off, and uh, Sophie Quirk scored a hat trick. I watched the highlights back. Um, and she's she looks like a good player, I have to admit. And uh, that was a, a good win for Portsmouth, so fair play to them. Of course, going to be one of our promotional rivals this year. Um, Chatham Town were beaten 3-1 by Hashtag, their first game in this uh, Tier 3. So, a good win for them to start their season. Um, and then Rugby Borough, of course, newly re- relegated team. They won 3-0 at home against London Bees. So, um, lots of goals this weekend. Um Leah, any thoughts on that? Um, going to be coming up against some, some teams this year, but... Uh, Opening day wins for, for many teams there? Um, I think, yeah, good wins for quite a lot of the teams. Um, you know, boosting their confidence going into the league. Um, you know, obviously, there's some big clubs um, that, you know, as you said, will be pushing for that promotion. But, you know, we'll focus on what we can do and, you know, not really think about, you know, what the other teams and what they can do and just do what. We know we can do. Good answer, Blue. Good answer. Mm, that very good answer. Good answer. Well played. Well played. But um, your thoughts on that, Blue? I know it's all about us, but um, some interesting results there. Yeah, I think shows the strength of Portsmouth. I think Cheltenham have lost a few good players, um, but I think Portsmouth are going to be a real threat this season. Um, also, yeah, a bit of Ricky have obviously added from, like we mentioned, Biggs, so that could be a threat too, especially coming up this weekend. Um, but still too early to to tell. Um, I mean, you look at us last season, we lost the first two and you write us off at that point. So too early to tell, but you can sort of pick up where teams are going to be sort of finishing a little bit. Um, but obviously you have to take every game and earn the right to win it. Um, and like Leah said, we need to focus on us and not be too distracted by others who are going on. If we focus on what we're doing every day in training, um, then hopefully the end result will be will be worth it. Definitely, and um, of course we're um, as you mentioned earlier, Blue. Uh, we're now got focus on the cup this weekend. It's a turning around of the Fornal Cup, aka the League Cup, at the AJL Arena. Billy Ricky Town, of course, the opponents. So yeah, Manny Biggs and Liv Smith will be making their returns um, very quickly. Um, yeah, thoughts on that, Blue? Um, just a nice little breather from our first league game. Just a little time opportunity now for a cup game. Maybe if you know. A few other players get some minutes as well. Yeah, I was going to say it'll be interesting to see whether Joey rotates at this stage in the season or whether he uses it as a game to to work with sort of his his idea of a starting eleven at this point and use it for a bit of uh, momentum and in-game practice, which is quite hard to do in training. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. But also as a bit of a preview for when we play them in the league, see what they're about gain some knowledge um, about them and weaknesses and strengths uh, for when it really matters. Um, I know we, we haven't always been the biggest fans of the Fornal Cup um, and can't seem to yeah put some good results in, but it may be different this year. I mean, I wouldn't mind a cup run. We always like a cup run. Um, but in terms of comparing this to a league game, probably doesn't carry as much importance. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what Billy Rikito as well, because um, they're off that you know that great start to their season. Um, but the problem is, if you lose this, you go into the plate, um, which is you know it's, it's another competition you're still in. So it, I think if you yeah you get to the next round, then you are yeah. in that, 
that. So, yeah. yeah, it's one of those weird. It's weird actually because yeah, yeah, you can get knocked out of this cup, but then you go into another cup. It doesn't really make sense. And then you could win that cup. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Leah, it's, it's yeah, it's a bit different because it's a cup game. But I'm um, back back home. Uh, we've got back to back home games actually now. Of course, we've got Plymouth as Blue said earlier. So um, yeah, thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think it'd be good to get back in front of the home crowd. You know, have the supporters back in. Um, I feel like, as Blue said, I feel like it would be a good tester for both teams. You know, see what each other are about and just see whereabouts we are and. Uh, yeah, and just see, you know, what football we can produce on the day. Um, yeah, not too worried about it. Um, but yeah, it'll be a good, good match, I reckon. Got wise, wise head on uh, Alia, hasn't she, Blue? She has indeed. Um, still only seventeen, so you're. I can't wait when you get to twenty twenty three. You're going to be uh, unbelievable. Looking forward to it, uh, Blue. Final words then on this pod. Leah, great debut for her on the pod as well. Any any other business? I don't think so. Just a, a shout out to Leah for coming on late notice. Um, but you've been great as a as a first as a debut on the pod as well. Um, and a big shout out to all the fans who travelled to Cardiff yeah. uh, because that is a mega journey. Um, and if you manage to go to the men's game and the women's game, a massive shout out to you too. You're a proper true fan. Um, you know we don't we don't miss the miles you put in, um, and we sort of re- we really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I'm sure you're happy. Two home games are coming up though, <laughs> that we can appreciate that too. All of us can do it. Yes. But yeah, uh, it's an enjoyable pod. Yes, indeed. Um, yes, shout out to Suit and Meg's dad with the drum. He had the drum and he had the blowhorn as well. Um, so shout out, shout out to him. Um, but yeah. I think we were joking. Like, Let's get Meg back on the pod because she made a debut. Um, oh, she scored, I mean. Um, but we thought, no, we can't do it back-to-back. But we'll get Meg on again at some stage to talk about that goal and um, throughout the season, I'm sure. Um, but no, thanks, Leah, for joining us. Thanks, Blue, as always, for joining me. Um, of course, shout-out to our sponsors at John Fowler Solicitors um, for their continued support. Uh, Billy Creek Town up next. Um, of course, the girls will be ready for training this week and all that sort of stuff. But, um, Blue, over to you. Take it away. And, uh, yeah. Be back next week. Thank you all for listening. Um, And yeah, we'll catch you next week after the Bitteriki game.